So in this video I wanted to look at with coronavirus who is most at risk of catching it and then is who is who you know who is most at risk of dying now or getting serious complications. Now the problem is again we don't always have all that much reliable data on this because it seems to contradict itself depending on who's releasing it and there's all these sorts of spins different groups put on it. So of course as always investigate all this for yourself. So firstly I think we want to look at who's most likely to catch it. Now the obvious thing is doctors. If a doctor is treating people whether it's with coronavirus or not you know, they're at the front line on the health thing, they're the ones that are most likely to catch infectious diseases if they're spreading around because they're having to deal with patients. So I say doctors are most at risk. Um, then I think you'd have people like who use public transport, either whether it be a bus driver or something like that, or just people on commuting on trains and buses. They're packed in, they're in those places for a long, dis you know, long period of time. Yeah, it's going to spread quite easily on there. So I think if you're somebody who commutes quite regularly, this is where you have to want to think, when shall I start wearing a mask or when shall I just stop commuting altogether if I don't want to catch this? Because the problem is you keep getting a lot of governments, as I complained about before, saying things like, oh, using crowded public transport is fine, just wash your hands. Well, if it's airborne or, you know, stuff like that, simply taking no preventative measures other than washing your hands isn't going to stop you catching it, is it? China wouldn't have had to lock down massive cities if you could just simply wash your hands and you wouldn't get it. Now, I'm not saying washing your hands isn't important, because it is, but it has to be used alongside a lot of other things. You can't just say, wash your hands and everything will be fine. You know, why bother with vaccines if you could just wash your hands and not get anything? So, there's that. Now, also, I think if you're a taxi driver, similarly to what we were saying about people on public transport, if you're getting people in a taxi or Uber a lot, you're probably going to end up getting people in close proximity to you who might have it. So, again, I think shop workers as well, because we were drilled on it where I work, that especially if you're handling money, you need to sanitise your hands more often than not, because, of course, germs on money, and if you're face-to-face -face with customers, you're going to be at greater risk for that reason. And imagine... You know, if you work in a job where you're not all that close to people for all that much of the day, you know, that sort of work, you're not as much at risk, but again, it depends how infectious it is. Also, bear in mind, the more often you're touching door handles and things like that, again, the more risky it is, because every time you touch a door handle, you know, if you've got germs on your hand, are you really seriously going to be able to wash your hands every single time you've touched a door handle? You know, this that's getting a bit ridiculous, because I'm sure most people, even if they've washed their hands, might have to even use a door to leave the toilet or something like that. It's why Dr. John Campbell's video is very good where he was saying, you know, it might be a good idea to carry tissues around with you. So when you're using doors in public, you can just use a tissue to open it and then bin the tissue next time you walk past a bin or something. Um, so they're the people I think are most at risk of catching it. Now, who's most at risk of dying? Now, this is where it gets really complicated because you get so much conflicting information on this. But I'd certainly say the elderly are more at risk. I think that's been quite obvious from what we've been seeing. It seems that the people in closer proximity to it for longer might be at more risk. I don't know if that's because you get more of the virus initially in you to begin with, so doctors, you know, catch more of it at once than somebody who might just be exposed to a virus micron every now and then. Um, so, you know, especially the elderly, people who are sick with various conditions, they were saying people with asthma are more at risk. I've got asthma, that's great news, isn't it? Um, we still don't know of a lot of conditions, to be honest, which ones put you more at risk or not, but I'd say anything that requires you to be on, like, other medications and not, you know, completely fit and healthy. Unfortunately, yeah, we are more at risk, you know, and that's why I, it really does annoy me when there's lots of groups that won't be honest with you saying, this is your mortality odds or what this, I'd like to know that information, thank you very much, so I can make more informed decisions about what I do, rather than, you know, it being, you'll probably be fine, you know, with that completely fake smile that the politician, uh, politicians always have. So, again, the elderly and the sick are definitely more at risk, however, Sadly, there seems to be a lot of information coming out of Iran that people in their 20s and 30s are dying. And there's lots of theories about this. Is it a mutated strain of the virus? Apparently Chinese researchers are now saying there's two strains of the virus, but always all this new stuff, check it from a few different sources. Because again, there can be fake news and stuff like that. Um, so it's really hard to tell what's legit and what's not with a lot of this stuff. But, you know, I'm guessing it's the older you are, the more underlying health conditions you have, the quality of hospital treatment, this is another thing. If you catch it earlier on and get given really good hospital treatment, your survival odds are much, much better, obviously, than somebody who catches it when it's a full-blown epidemic or pandemic in your country. And then, of course, hospitals are overwhelmed, no oxygen tanks, you know, no, no ICU care for you, you're, do you're doomed, basically. Because the scary thing with this is that as much as the mortality rate might be something like 3%, supposedly, like, 20%, as in 1 in 5 people that get it, do need severe hospital care. Now, if you're that 20% of people later down the road, if it's really widespread, that probably means it's going to get closer to a 20% mortality rate rather than a 20% critical 
case and then depending on how good your hospital care is. So there's lots of things like that to consider. So I'd say, you know, doctors especially really ought to be wearing full PPE at this point, you know. If I was in charge of all this stuff, I would say, look, if we know there's a virus going around that's potentially very dangerous and very contagious, surely you'd go for more inconvenient levels of sanitation and, you know, wearing personal protective equipment, like masks and gowns and things like that, than chancing it. Because, you know, in the long run, if, if it turns out it wasn't that dangerous, you know, the doctors have just wasted a bit more time per day putting on a lot of gear and taking it off again. Um, whereas if it turns out it is contagious, they've potentially not caught it and not spread it to other people. So it's really a no-brainer to me that you should just, you know, say, like, if I'm going on a busy train or bus, would I say, I want to wear a mask and goggles at this point or something like that, because, you know, I, I don't want to risk getting it. Uh, there's lots of things like that, so it seems very strange to me the governments are saying things like, you know, the most important thing is to slow down the spread of it, which is completely true, because it means hospitals and doctors and everything don't get overwhelmed, but at the same time, why they're saying don't wear, don't wear masks, you know, don't take lots of uh, protective sort of stuff, because of course, if, if they were being completely honest with you, this goes back to the last video I did, what they'd probably have said is, look, to slow it down, take more precautions than necessary, it's better to be over-cautious than under-cautious. But yeah, there we go, so stay safe everybody, uh, let's keep checking the numbers coming in, stay alert, if there's the more cases in your area, the more you might want to think about wearing a mask or not commuting. Also, it goes without saying, if you're more at risk, then you want to take precautions earlier rather than later, and if you have vulnerable family members or people you're in contact with a lot, you might want to take more precautions that way, because even if you're somebody that will do alright, this is an important thing. People you spread it to might not be. And that's why I really hate it when you get somebody just going, oh, it's just a flu, I don't care, I'm not going to take any precautions. Or even if you're going to be alright, mate, it doesn't mean everybody else you're going to spread it to isn't going to be alright, you know. Anyway, um, thanks for watching, everybody, and stay safe.